Hello everyone, Data here, and welcome back to another NHL 21 Career Simulation. Today, taking on the newest and hottest addition to the newest roster update, Cole Caulfield, possibly the hottest prospect in the NHL right now with the way he's come onto the scene in the NHL with Montreal Canadiens, the overtime hero. If you didn't already know, he's the 15th overall selection in the 2019 NHL entry draft, went to the Canadiens. He had fantastic numbers in the U.S. under-18 team, played two seasons with the U of Wisconsin, his first 36 and 36, and then most recently scoring 52 points in 31 games, including 30 goals. Short stint with the Laval Rocket in the AHL, scored four points with three goals in two games. And since he's come to the NHL, he has played six games as of the time of recording, and he has scored two overtime winners. As of when this is uploaded, not too long from now, so I'm gonna be grinding to get this out. Who knows if he may, might have some more. But suffice to say, he is a, an extremely hot prospect right now. I'm very excited to see how he simulates in game. So as you know, with the way that the career simulations go here on the channel, I take control of a random team in the opposite conference, this time being the Western Conference since Caulfield's starting on the Canadians. Free agency, trades, scouting, coaching, everything is totally automatic. The computer is in charge of everything. I'm going to simulate through the entire whatever 20 years that this could be for Caulfield's career and we'll see what happens. Does he become the savior, the sniper that the Canadians need to get them a Stanley Cup they've been waiting for since 1993, another one since then? Can he have a long and fruitful career? with Le Canadien Montreal, a team that has really needed the scoring touch. Will he be able to win Rocket Richards along the way? Hart Trophies, Art Rosses, who knows how this guy simulates. I have never seen him simulate, obviously. It'll be my first time seeing it with you. So awards, broken records, all those things are definitely on the table and it's going to be exciting to follow along and see what happens. The last time simulation happened, it was for Trevor Zegers, went well over an hour 20 or so. So I try to keep it under that. We're going to go a lot quicker through the, se the, 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 the multiple seasons seasons and try not to look at the entire team and its record too much just focus a bit more on Caulfield so starting out here in year number one 2020 2021 Caulfield is on the first line with the Laval Rocket playing with Jordan Wheel and Paul Byron he is a 78 overall with medium elite potential to start off his career 19 years of age 165 five foot seven number 22 they say two twos never lose he has a 0.88 million for three seasons on his ELC entry level contract most notably his 90 discipline hey that's cool to boost the overall but to look at his numbers 90 acceleration 89 speed 90 agility 89 deking really good numbers out of the gate for a prospect four star shooting is most notable in my opinion especially the shooting accuracy at 86 and 87 defense awareness you know stick checking it's gonna come the physical might never come to be honest with him being five foot seven I don't know if he'll ever really get above three stars but the puck skills the shooting the senses the skating that makes up for it and more so i don't know if he'll get much opportunity in the nhl in year number one but let's go ahead and start this off without further ado year number one of cole caulfield's career here in nhl 21 in year number one, Laval Rocket finished 19th in the AHL with a record of 38, 32, and 6. That was good enough for the playoffs, and although it wasn't a ton of points, Cole Caulfield was tied in a three-way tie for second in team scoring with 20 goals and 23 assists, 43 points in 76 games. He grew to an 81 overall. The Rocket did lose in the second round, however, in a brutal seven-game series against the eventual uh, Calder Cup champion Toronto Marlies. Caulfield did score five goals and eight points in 11 games in those playoffs and increased to an 80, 81 overall and a third line scoring forward. Medium lead potential all the while. Senses are going up. The skating goes from 90 to 91. The puck skills are increasing. Small increases to the attributes as you can see there. And if you're interested in his trade value, this is how it looks after year number one, which is probably not too dissimilar from how it looked at the absolute beginning. That medium elite and that overall at the young age definitely gives it quite a boost. So in the year number one offseason, he's already been called up. He's ready to go for year number two and making his NHL debut on the Montreal Canadiens. Year number two and Cole Caulfield is not just ready to make the NHL on the second line playing with Nick Suzuki and Tyler Toffoli. 
He had an 84 overall. He continues to grow in the shooting, especially four and a half stars now. 91 offensive awareness, which is huge. The skating is wonderful. The puck skills at four star, that 93 deking. He is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the NHL on a Montreal Canadiens team that lost in the Eastern Conference Finals last season. So I could definitely see them doing some damage. The bottom six looks pretty overhauled for the Canadiens. Defense looks uh, like most of the same. Mike Riley found his way back to Montreal y'all and it's Jake Allen and Carey Price. So in year number two, year number one in the NHL, what can Caulfield do? Oh, year number two was a brutal heartbreak as the Canadians finished 11th best in the NHL with a record of 42, 30, and 10, but 94 points was not good enough to make the playoffs. Meanwhile, in the Western Conference, you have the 21st place Predators with 87 points making it, so an extremely strong Eastern Conference. Caulfield definitely had a great rookie season though, scoring 20 goals and 30 assists for 50 points in just 68 games played. Very happy to see that from him. Although when looking at rookie scoring in the NHL, he was only third highest in points after Turcott and Denisenko and Bean tied for second. Shout out to Jake Bean with 51 points. So probably good enough for a nomination, but I don't think good enough for a Calder win. Nonetheless, a very strong rookie season, shooting at 12.7%. Shout out to Eric Stahl, who scored 63 points. He remains at an 84 overall, growing to a second line forward. Attributes look like this, and we'll see how he grows heading into year number three. And shout out once again to Jake Bean for actually capturing the Calder Trophy here in 2022. Year number three, Caulfield sophomore season, and he is still an 84 overall on the second line now with Alex Wenberg and Tyler Toffoli. Check out the first line as Patrice Bergeron has found his way home to Quebec as he is on the Montreal Canadiens centering that first line. So that's pretty wild. I like the bottom six, Andrew Shaw back on the Canadiens. Defense, Petrie, Weber, Fleury, Riley, Ruta, Murphy, and Price and Allen. So not much has changed for the Montreal Canadiens. Cole Caulfield listed as a second line forward. He is going to the second year of his ELC. And of course, the three, the four and a half star shooting, the four star puck skills, four star senses, all that fantastic stuff is still here. And we'll look for him to grow, have a full healthy season and really take advantage of having a good playmaking centerman. So we'll see how Caulfield's sophomore season goes for a team that really bitterly just missed out on the playoffs last season. In year number three, the East is still extremely strong, but the Canadians squeak into the playoffs. Somehow squeak is the word we have to choose here. Ninth best in the NHL, going 47, 32, and 3. Check out the Panthers in 12th, missing out with 45 wins. Surprisingly, Cole Caulfield, not a huge part of those 47 wins, I'd say, scoring only 16 goals and 29 assists for 45 points in 73 games. Not a terrible sophomore season. And in the playoffs, despite beating out the Sabres in seven in round number one, the Canadians would fall in seven to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who went on to get swept out of the Stanley Cup Finals by the Chicago Blackhawks. I believe Caulfield had an injury that carried over from the end of the regular season as he only ended up playing in seven games in the playoffs and only got three assists in those games so no goals for him and now at the end of his first two nhl seasons heading into year number three in the nhl the fans are going to be cutting him a little less slack so we're gonna have to be seeing some nice numbers and nice growth over the off season heading into year number four more crazy lineup changes heading into Cole Caulfield's final year on his entry-level deal. He finds himself on the third line now in Montreal with Andrew Shaw at center and former captain, 34-year-old Max Pacioretty on his left wing. So Caulfield at an 84. Attributes still look pretty similar to year number two. Four-star puck skills, four-and-a-half-star shooting. Physical hasn't changed much. I believe he's been injured or had some time injured in both of his first two seasons, yes. So he'll look for a strong, healthy season with Pacioretty and Shaw on that third line. Defense looks pretty rough as Caden Gooley's on the first pair. Petrie down to an 82. Bit of a yikes. On the power play, he does have second unit time. And between the pipes, it is Ben Bishop and Carey Price. So a lot of aging contracts, rough overalls, I have to say. Not high expectations, especially look at Bergeron in 83. 
Not super high expectations for this team, especially Josh Anderson on the fourth line. But let's hope that Caulfield has a strong season heading into what will be his first contract at the end of this one. As kind of expected, the Canadians did not have a great year number three with Cole Caulfield, year number four overall, going 38, 37, and 7 for 21st in the NHL. Caulfield had an extremely disappointing season, in my opinion. He lit it up on the power play, 15 points, but 32 points in 82 games in total a full healthy season and only 14 goals to show for it kind of disappointing he is still at an 84 overall i'm not seeing much change in any of his attributes they're still great at the puck skills the shooting the senses etc but they're not really getting much better now at the age of 23 his contract is expiring i'm expecting a kind of two-year bridge deal kind of thing but it's disappointing to not see him flourishing as much as he could be through three seasons. At the end of his ELC, he has 50 goals and 127 points to show in 223 career games. And he's been going downhill, to be honest, in goals, assists, points, plus minus, uh, even in his shooting. Shooting percentage hasn't been great. So, this, you know, especially playing on the third line is not helping him. So heading into year number five, which will be his fourth in the NHL, I'm really hoping for a promotion in the lineup and putting in some work with Gary Roberts in the offseason. Headed into year number five, his fourth NHL season, Cole Caulfield does get promoted to the second line, which is nice. He's playing with Suzuki and Max Pacioretty. Odd that Pacioretty grows to an 85 with top nine potential, but Caulfield drops to an 83 with medium elite potential. I believe it's his shooting that dropped from the 88s and 90s to more of the 87s and 88s there. I'm not sure if anything else has really dropped too, too much. Getting to play on the second line will be extremely helpful, as last season he was averaging just under 12 minutes a night. So that plus some power play time will be very helpful. Unfortunately, the Canadians are struggling a little bit because Josh Anderson's at an 81 and he wouldn't really be that low of an overall. And we see that the game is starting to have its impact as the fourth line is just made of 75 and 76 overalls. So the brokenness of the AI GM is starting to come in. Bergeron still first line center. Defense is pretty rough. Shea, Miller, Petrie, Guli, Kulikov, and Flurry. Goaltending 280 overalls. So again, that's pretty broken. And Shea Weber finds himself as a healthy scratch. Plus, Carey Price is now down in the AHL, so the two starting goalies from last season, Bishop and Price, are now both in Laval. So that speaks to some of the major issues in the Canadians organization right now. But even if it's not a successful team season, let's hope for the best for Cole Caulfield. He did sign a one-year $2.26 million contract, so let's hope for something good. He can sign maybe a three-year bridge, start getting paid, start developing overall-wise, and lead the Canadians to glory. Year number five was the Canadians' weakest season yet as they finished 25th in the NHL with a record of 33, 39, and 10. However, at the same time, it was Cole Caulfield's best season in terms of goals and points as he scored 22 goals and scored 52 points in a full 82-game season, which is great to see. It was also a career high in minutes played, which definitely played a huge role as he was playing uh, just about 17 and a half minutes per night. With that RFA deal expiring, he will need another one, getting close to UFA status now at the age of 24. He remains at an 83 overall, and we need to see some off-season growth, for goodness sakes, heading into his fifth NHL season and year number six. Also, how about a quick congratulatory shout-out to the Chicago Blackhawks, who have now won four consecutive Stanley Cups from 2021-22 to 24-25. And then in the Conn Smythe category, three in a row for Kane, one for Phil Grubauer. That is really crazy to see from an AI GM to put together a team like that. So major props to the Hawks. Year number six sees Cole Caulfield remain on the second line, now with new line mates as Claude Giroux, another French-Canadian who finds his way to Montreal, playing uh, at center, Brennan Gallagher on the left wing. Cole Caulfield still at an 84 overall, like we said. The Canadians not looking too good these days, lineup-wise. Defense, Shea Miller, Xavier Ouellette, Kane Gooley's not growing. This is scary stuff. They did sign Elvis Merz Lickens in Nets, though, which is nice. Anyways, Cole Caulfield still at an 84 overall. He is listed as a second-line forward. He has the four-star shooting. He still has all that offensive awareness and those good, juicy attributes. So, logically thinking, we should see another 20-plus, 50-plus point season, if not more 
from Cole Caulfield. He signed a five-year contract paying him $4.765 million per season, which gives him $23.825 million in the bank. After this, he will be a UFA though, so we gotta really hope, or Caulfield has to hope, that he really puts up numbers during these five seasons to get paid and to hopefully stay with his franchise, perhaps. So, year number six, let's do it. Another tough year for Caulfield and the Canadians as teams below them in the NHL standings continue to make the playoffs over them. They finished 17th in the league with a record of 38, 36, and 8. Cole Caulfield finally started to wake up a little bit as he set new career highs in goals, assists, and points as he scored 27 goals and 65 points in 82 games. That is exactly what we've been waiting to see from him and doing it on the second line. Although he was at an all-time high in, uh, in uh, time on the ice per game, just under 19 minutes, he remains at an 84 overall on that second line. Either way, the attributes are looking quite good, and you know what? It, they came through. Even though they're not growing very much from the last couple seasons, and a couple seasons ago he scored 32 points, hey, this season he scored 65. So a great little coming out party for him, finally waking up and leading the team in points, what we've been needing to see from him. Let's hope that this carries over the offseason, and that when we head into year number seven, we can finally think about getting back into the playoffs. Year number seven for Cole Caulfield, and he is still on the Canadian second line at an 84 overall. This year, centered by Antoine Morin, so very nice to see him making the team. Brendan Saad on the Canadians as well. We're starting to see the Canadians' prospects make it, their, their generated prospects, that is. Vincent Robetai, who was a first-round pick in 2024. Nikita Finneganov, first-round pick in 2022, so that's nice to see. Defense still looking pretty rough, and goaltending, it's Elvis, backed up by 73 three overall 39 year old Carey Price on uh, in a minor league deal actually so he got re-signed afterwards uh, any generous Scott Ackers he's a first round pick so also generated anyways Cole Caulfield 84 overall not much to say because the attributes aren't really changing much but let's hope that high offensive awareness the high shooting the good skating and great puck skills paired with a good playmaker and Antoine Morin at 92 passing and all that good stuff, plus a little power play time in that first unit will be good for him in his seventh NHL season and be enough to get this team back into the playoffs. At the trade deadline of year number seven, the Canadians end up trading Nick Suzuki to the Columbus Blue Jackets for two first round picks. So I'm assuming that the season's not going well, and it also singles, signals that the Canadians are moving into a rebuild phase. Unfortunately, they do get blackballed a little bit by a lot of their prospects not being in the game or developing as well as they would be. I think Meshack and Norlander and Elanen and Gooley and a lot of these guys would be developing a lot more in the future, as well as Josh Anderson not being at an 81 overall. But that's aside from the point. Canadians seem to be moving into a rebuild phase, and hopefully those two first-round picks will help. Despite trading away Nick Suzuki, the Canadians finished 14th best in the NHL with a record of 44-33-5, and, and once again miss out on the playoffs despite having such a good record. Meanwhile, you have teams as far down as 18th making the playoffs for the Western Conference. So no Suzuki meant that Caulfield had to do a little more scoring this season, and he did set a new career high in goals with 31 in a season, close to a season, well, his career high of 65 from last season, as he scored 64 in 82. It looks as though he benefited playing with Antoine Morin, as he's got 50 assists right there. But Cole Caulfield heading into season number eight, still at an 84 overall. But hey, hits the 30 goal plateau, so maybe it's the attributes and not the overall, as long as he can get it done. So I don't know what kind of rebuild phase we're going into, what those first round picks may become, but good vibes to the Habs here, hopefully into year number eight. Season number eight, and Cole Caulfield finally finds himself on the top line of the Montreal Canadiens, playing up there with Antoine Morin and now 32-year-old Jonathan Drouin. Uh, Kasha, Verana, Dickinson, quite the different team. Everyone, actually, the lines two, three, and four are all completely different. The only original players in the forwards left are Drouin and Caulfield, and defensively, there is no one left. we got Will Butcher up on that top pair, and uh, Merce Lincolns and Volkov here. So no original Canadians left, and by the way, Volkov, medium starter, second round pick. 
scratch. You have Ryan Paling. So very few original Montreal Canadiens le are left already by the year 2027. Anyways, Caulfield now has dropped from medium, medium elite to medium top six potential. Not really good news. Attributes still look the same as always. He has three more. Ooh, that's weird. So he has three more years. But because the cap has adjusted itself, he's now getting paid 6.34 per season. So don't worry about that too much. It's just all that matters is that he has three years left on his contract, just that the computer has adjusted it accordingly. And that's pretty much it. He's coming off back-to-back -back improved years of goal scoring, 60-plus point seasons. Now playing that top line with a great playmaker. Let's hope that he continues to develop what we've been seeing. Year number eight was absolutely brutal and the worst season yet, as the Canadians were the third third worst team in the league finishing 29th a record of 30 42 and 10. Cole Caulfield was a bit of a bright spot though he didn't hit 30 goals 60 points but pretty much as close as you can get with 28 and 58 in 82 games negative 15 that top line didn't look great looks like there's no depth scoring pretty much whatsoever on this team he's still an 84 overall his potential is now exact top six which is not great attributes look the same as always there's not much to say for the last few years he'll have two more seasons at 6.3 now and let's just hope that there's some good drafting and good offseason management to get this team back in a winning position for season number nine also, a quick shout out. The Canadians have had the 15th spot on like in two or three drafts now. And then in the year that they don't, New Jersey goes from 15 to 3, and Montreal drops from 3 to 5. So that's just twisted. They have the fifth overall pick and the 15th overall pick in this upcoming draft. And that fifth overall selection was thankfully a good player. 82 overall, medium elite. So let's really hope that we can get something going here. Year number nine, Cole Caulfield's eighth NHL season sees more changes. So that's exactly what I was asking for in the offseason. He's now on the second line with Steven Stamkos, 38 years of age at his center, and Jonathan Drouet on the left. On the first line is now Verana Morin and Ken Rizzi, the fifth overall pick in 2025 with five-star shootings found his way to Montreal. Weaver, that fifth overall pick, is on the third line already. Defense is still pretty weak for the most part, a bit stronger than we've seen recently, but still pretty weak. Alvis at 34 at 81 overall starting backed up by the young uh, rookie Volkov. Cole Caulfield, nothing much to say. 84 overall, four and a half star shooting. Still in the 90 discipline, the 91 offensive awareness, the 93 deking. I'm pretty sure not a single attribute has changed at all for the last few seasons. But hey, it seems to be working. The team is stronger overall. It's a good second line. Let's see what happens in year number nine. Year number nine was another lackluster season from the Canadians, but it did show some improvement as they finished 24th in the NHL with a record of 39, 42, and 1. Cole Caulfield had what I believe was his third worst season of his career, scoring 18 goals and 28 assists, 46 points in 82 games, negative 25. I'm really not understanding why Cole Caulfield is not getting it done. The offensive awareness, plus the shooting, plus the ice time, the skating. The only thing that really is hurting him is that, I don't know, his shot blocking and his aggressiveness and his body checking. Like He has the puck skills, he's getting the line mates, he's getting the ice time. Stamco scores 61 points. Where is Cole Caulfield? So... Disappointing 46-point season, still an 84 overall, where else would he be? Next season, he'll be on an expiring deal, possibly going to UFA status, so that's something to keep note of. And let's check out his 10th season and 9th in the NHL. Year number 10, his 9th in the NHL, Cole Caulfield, 84 overall, still in that second line with now 39-year-old Steven Stamkos. He's still here getting paid big money. Varana's on his line now. Robitaille moves up to the top line. Moha, Rizzi, etc. Drawing down to the third line. And Roy Weavers, for some reason, on that fourth line. Cristobal Huez, son, Rene Huez here. Defense still very lackluster. Uh, that's the most disappointing part of this entire sim, I think. And goaltending is Volkov and Grubauer. Interesting. Aside from that, nothing to write home about. Especially, speaking of nothing to write home about, Cole Caulfield's attributes are, you guessed it, probably exactly the same. Maybe his shot accuracy goes from 87 to 88. But aside from that, I'm not seeing any changes. Uh, it's the last year of his contract, so he really has to put in some work this season if he wants to get paid. I don't know if the Canadians are going to want to commit to him long term. He's the second longest serving player on the team after Jonathan Drouet. So 2029-2030 season, let's hit it. 
At the trade deadline in year number 10, Cole Caulfield was shipped off to the Columbus Blue Jackets back with his friend Nick Suzuki. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it. I didn't quite realize that he... I forgot that he was on an expiring deal and I didn't go into the trade deadline to look and see if he would get moved, but he ended up getting traded. He didn't have a lot of trade value, so I don't think it would really be for much. Unfortunately, the game doesn't tell me what he was traded for, so I do apologize for missing that. He was on a career-high pace with the Canadians when he got traded. He had 54 points in 60 games, ended up scoring 9 points and 6 goals in 20 games with the Blue Jackets, bringing him to a grand total of 63 points in 80 games on the season. A very, very good season after the last couple of ones that he had. So on the Columbus Blue jackets unfortunately Nick Suzuki is no longer there but he did find himself slotted onto the second line with William Eklund and Alexandre Texier pretty solid team it's okay I'd say better than the Canadians that's for sure and it's nice to see him getting that top six role maintained however the Blue Jackets did just miss out on the playoffs the 17th best team in the NHL with a record of 36 34 and 12 just five points back of the Senators so unfortunately they made that move maybe for nothing we'll see if Caulfield's interested in re-signing in the offseason but after putting up some pretty solid numbers, I'd say that he's ready to command a little bit of a price tag. Still an 84 overall, still with the top six potential, nothing really to say about the attributes, of course, expiring deal. So we'll see what team gets Cole Caulfield's rights, how long that deal will be for and for how much. Headed into his 10th NHL season and year number 11 overall. Heading into his 10th season in the NHL and 11th year overall, Cole Caulfield stayed with the Columbus Blue Jackets and he signed a five-year contract paying him a total of $30.375 million, just over $6 million per season to stay here for the next five years. Attributes the same as always at an 84 overall. He is with Wenberg, back with Wenberg, who he was with on the Canadians, and Dylan Gunther on the second line. First line looks pretty solid right here. Uh, third line has an 88 overall Alex Texier. Defense has Wierenski and Jones, uh, Will Butcher, former Canadian as well. And the goaltending is a bit questionable with Aiden Hill and a prospect. Scratch is no one special. So hopefully this Columbus, Columbus Blue Jackets team will have more success than the Canadians have had. Cole Caulfield has not been to the playoffs in who knows how long. He has now played 713 career NHL games. Has not been to the playoffs since he played seven games back in 2023. So it'll be eight years since he's been to the playoffs when it comes up to this upcoming playoff. So hopefully he'll get some action here in year number 11. In year number 11, his 10th in the NHL, Cole Caulfield finally made his second appearance back in the playoffs as the Columbus Blue Jackets captured the last place in the Eastern Conference, 14th in the NHL with a record of 42, 31, and 9. His goal scoring was not a big part of the team as he scored only 15 goals in 82 games, 49 points, which isn't terrible, but really not what you would expect from 4.5 star shooting and 91 offensive awareness. Despite it not being the lowest point total of his career, this was the lowest goal scoring season of his career and lowest shooting percentage at 7.9%. However, Caulfield and the Blue Jackets' time was extremely short in the playoffs as they lost in five games in the first round to the New Jersey Devils. That inability to score definitely did not help the Blue Jackets in the playoffs as their time there was very short-lived as they lost in five games in round number one to the New Jersey Devils. And in those five games, Cole Caulfield scored two assists and was a negative seven. So this is just bonkers that he cannot simulate at all. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Attributes, here they are for the millionth time. Uh, he'll have four years left on that pretty big contract, so the Blue Jackets will not be happy with the production that they've gotten from him. 84 overall, top six potential. He's now at 30 years of age. Let's head into year number 12. Year number 12 sees Caulfield keep his regular second line right wing spot on the Blue Jackets with Antonio Stranges now as his centerman and Dylan Gunther who scored 40 goals last season on the left wing. I guess that's why the goal production has been a little bit lackluster. Defense looks like this starting to get a little bit older. Goaltending not great as it usually gets in, in uh, franchise mode as the AIGM start to use 70 overall goalies left and right. 
Either way, 84 overall as always, nothing to say about that. Four years left on that deal, and let's hope that he can score at least more than 15 goals and try to be a big piece in this Blue Jackets team that wants to stay competitive. Year number 12, technically a winning season, but not a great one for the Blue Jackets as they finished 19th in the NHL with a record of 37, 34, and 11. Caulfield definitely woke up a little bit as he scored 23 goals and 54 points in all 82 games for the Blue Jackets. Now at the age of 31, still an 84 overall. Attributes, <laughs> I don't even know what to say because there's nothing left to say. Three years left on that contract, he's getting paid big. All I can really hope for is that the Blue Jackets do more as an organization because Caulfield does not seem to be the difference maker and we ought to hope that the pieces around him will be able to complement him well. Year number 13 and 31-year-old Cole Caulfield is still on the second line right wing at an 84 overall. Now with 82 overall Antonio Stranges and 87 overall Christian Veselainen. Nothing much to say about the Blue Jackets. Their forward depth is pretty solid, I would say. Defense is a big struggle as Seth Jones is now gone. This guy Gormley, okay, I guess he's going to help out. And goaltending is atrocious. Scratches are whatever. Victor Olofsson, 79 overall. Anyways, 84 overall Cole Caulfield. No change in his stagnant uh, attributes. He has played 877 games, 239 goals, negative 105 at the moment. So things are not going too well so far in his career, but he still has the twilight years here to make something happen. I don't know what to tell you. Three more years in this contract. Let's just cross our fingers. A slightly better season for the Blue Jackets, but still not a playoff contending one as they finished 18th in the NHL with a record of 41, 35, and 6. Caulfield had his best full season with the Blue Jackets, finally scoring 25 goals and 60 points in all 82 games. Very nice to see, finally, third in team scoring. Still an 84 overall, nothing to say about that, and let's head into year number 14. Year number 14, and I'm really liking this team for the Blue Jackets. Caulfield, same as always, 84 on the second line right wing. He's now playing with an 84 overall sniper, who was a first round pick, and an 83 overall two-way forward, another first round pick from the Blue Jackets. Good youth with good potential. Rene Huet, who won the Calder with the Canadians, found his way to the Blue Jackets now. The top line's pretty solid, so I like this top six. I like the defense a lot as well. Well, actually, you know what? I don't like the defense a lot as well, but what I want to say is that I like the goaltending, so hopefully that will help the defense. 85 overall, medium league goaltender who is signed to a seven year, 70 plus million dollar contract. So that should be a huge help for the Blue Jackets moving forward. But again, the biggest issue, aside from that top pair, even just this top defender, is the rest of the team. So hopefully Goffield can score some goals with this team. The goalie can stand on his head, make up for the defending, and let's get back to the playoffs. Another year of a brutally strong Eastern Conference as the Blue Jackets finished 17th in the NHL going 40, 36, and 6. Despite having the same amount of points as Dallas, they were not very close to the Rangers who had 96 points, so really tough in the East. Caulfield honestly had a great season, scoring 22 goals and 57 points in 70 games. He would have been on pace for 66, rounded up to 67 points, which would have been a career high for him. He is on his expiring deal now. The salary has changed around a little bit, but all we need to remember is that next year, his contract will be expiring. The Blue Jackets are trending up. They have great goal scorers. The defense has not been great, even despite having a good goalie. The numbers were not fantastic because the defense was, you know, in the mid-70 overalls and all that jazz so Cole Caulfield's gonna have to put up another good season if he wants to get paid the big bucks as well as stick on this team that is trending upwards so we'll see what season number 15 has in store Season number 15, Caulfield's 14th in NHL, and I gotta say, this is probably the scariest forward core that I have seen. He's an 84 overall with Landon Peterson Pedersen, that first overall, that's 15th overall sniper, and Tiny Douglas, another sniper. So it's a sniper, 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 second line here. The forward core is very well rounded. You got 83s on the fourth line. We have an 84 overall healthy scratch. It is a solid lineup. Defense still not great, but better than last season. And the goaltending, 85, backed up by 78. So I like this team very much. Cole Caulfield has only been to the playoffs twice. Twice is in, in his entire career for 12 total games. He has never even scored a playoff goal in the NHL. 
So we really got to see him back in the NHL. He's on an expiring deal this season. So let's hope for a great performance for him and for the sake of his team. Welcome back to the playoffs, Cole Caulfield. Year number 15 was his best team record season yet. The Blue Jackets were just a point behind the, the Red Wings as well for the best in the conference. They were sixth in the NHL with a record of 47, 27, and 8. Caulfield was definitely not at the top of team scoring and only 18 goals, but a 53-point season, which is pretty respectable enough, I suppose, for a team as strong as this one. And yeah. in the playoffs, the Columbus Blue Jackets came through and captured the 2035 Stanley Cup. Game 7 victory in round 1, 6 games in round 2, sweeping the Leafs out of the conference finals and then taking down the Dallas Stars in 6 games. That is quite a roller coaster for Cole Caulfield's third appearance in the playoffs of his career. And you know what? Cole Caulfield was a huge part of that Stanley Cup championship. Not only did he finally score his first playoff goal, but he ended up scoring 7 goals and 23 points in 23 games, a point per game throughout the entire postseason. Dylan Gunter did end up winning the Conn Smythe, but Caulfield was a huge part of that Stanley Cup championship. Now at the age of 34, that 87 poise came through. He grew to an 85 overall with that Stanley Cup championship, so we can finally say that there's some change in the attributes. I'm seeing 94 deking. I think there's some puck skills that have gone up. I don't think his skating or physical has really changed much. Maybe his uh, strength has gone from 78 to 79, but hey, an 85 overall is an 85 overall. Coming off of a Stanley Cup championship, a great postseason, on an expiring deal, I'm not sure if the Blue Jackets will be able to afford re-signing Cole Caulfield, but nonetheless, he has made his mark on the Blue Jackets and has a Stanley Cup ring headed into year number 16. Season number 16 and Cole Caulfield is back with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He signed a one-year contract paying him $5.25 million. Maintained his 85 overall attributes and so finally we're seeing that. <laughs> and how does he get repaid? Third line demotion. Yet he is playing with Barrett Hayton and Nathaniel Barabal, a sniper with five-star shooting. So that should be helpful since he seems to be more of a playmaker than a sniper these days. Anyways, the forward core in Columbus is still very solid. The defense looks pretty much, uh, whoa, a 62 overall, 72 overall. Yeah, congrats to the AIGM for what he's doing. And we still have, well, we have stronger goaltending as well with uh, the Mackinac still here, now backed up by a stronger backup at an 82 overall. Anyways, 85 overall, like we said, attributes are still looking juicy with the 94 deking, 91 offensive awareness, and the 89 to 91 shot attributes. Let's hope that despite the third line minutes, Cole Caulfield can still make up for it with that first unit power play. And who knows, possibly even a question of back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. Another strong season for the Blue Jackets as they finished 8th best in the NHL with a record of 44, 30, and 8. Cole Caulfield really finding his groove finally in his older age, it only took him 15 years, as he scored 17 goals and 44 assists, the classic sniper playmaker joke here in franchise mode. Uh, 61 points in 82 games, that was the most points he scored in a season ever since he was traded in that season where he split between the Canadians and the Blue Jackets, I believe he scored 63 that season. Either way, 35 years of age and an 85 overall headed into the playoffs. But in the playoffs, it was a classic first round exit as the Blue Jackets dropped in five games to the Hurricanes, who then dropped to the Islanders, who went on to win the Stanley Cup. Once again, Dallas making the finals, but five game exit, nice and quick for Columbus. In those five games, Cole Caulfield scored a nice juicy one goal for one point. He maintains 85 overall at the moment, has that expiring deal up to 95 deking. Hey, shout out to five star puck skills and five star shooting as well. 92 for the accuracies, 92 discipline, really getting a sage in his old age here. But anyways, at the age of 35, his contract demands will probably still be high, but will the Blue Jackets be able to afford him with such youth on their team? I'm not sure about that. One thing's for sure, the Blue Jackets have rejuvenated and reinvigorated Caulfield's career. Let's see where it goes from here. Year number 17, Cole Caulfield's agent and the Blue Jackets sat down in a room, they found out a number, and they signed a one-year $5.4 million contract. As Caulfield inching closer to retirement, not ready yet, 
but he wants to sign on for one more season. He likes this team. He's on the third line with Nathaniel Barabal, a sniper, and Simon Holmstrom, actually a real player, at least that's nice. And the forward core is still quite solid here in Columbus. Defense is slightly better, still really scary with a 60 overall guy there. And the goaltending, they lost their backup, but they still have their starter. Like we said, Cole Caulfield is now 35 years of age. He's playing on the left wing, so maybe on his off wing that's going to help. He has dropped to exact top 9 potential. 84 overall, despite maintaining his 92 shooting accuracy, his 95 deking. So that has stayed high, but his skating has gone a little bit. I think his acceleration was 92, now it's 90. So those attributes will begin to fall, and hopefully those puck skill senses and shootings can stay, and that will allow him to keep producing in the NHL. Let's hope for more good things from Caulfield and the Blue Jackets. How about this, the trade deadline, though? Despite having a winning record... The Blue Jackets decided to trade Caulfield and Kako, both on expiring deals with a third round pick, to the Vancouver Canucks for two pro well, maybe they're players or prospects, we'll have to look them up quickly. They also decided to trade away uh, Simon Holmstrom, who's on an expiring deal, and Nathaniel Barabel and Nolan Graham. So they pretty much cleaned house. The Blue Jackets looking very different now, trading a lot of expiring deals. And this team looks very different now. And like I said, they had a winning record, even a comfortable winning record. And they were poised to make a good playoff run. So I'm not sure why they did this. Uh, the Diva, I don't know. I really don't know. These prospects don't look like anything crazy. I think this guy was part of the deal. Uh, yeah, from Vegas. He's just a low top six, 23-year-old, 75 overall player. That other player they got, Bissonette, is just 69 overall, medium top six as well. So I feel like they could have gotten a lot more out of these deals. Second round pick, two-way forward. Yeah, that's... A huge mistake from the Blue Jackets organization. Caulfield was killing it as well with 51 points in 61 games. He was on pace for a 68 rounded up 69 point season, which would have been a career high right over, uh, right over, yeah, it would have been an easy career high. So that's really peculiar, but hey, he finds himself now on the second line in Vancouver with Torsten Bjorkstrand, who's a power forward, and Kyle Connor at the age of 40. What? 40-year-old Kyle Connor with five-star shooting, five-star senses. Okay. Uh, Kako's on the top line with this guy Jenks and F Mario Phaneuf. It's a good team in here in Vancouver. Uh, defense looks great. Quinn Hughes is 37 years old. Uh, Goaltending is questionable, as it usually is. But hey, Cole Caulfield, now a member of the Vancouver Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks ended up barely squeaking into the playoffs, finishing 20th in the NHL with a record of 38, 34, and 10. But once again, the weaker Western Conference allows for some flexibility. Meanwhile, the Columbus Blue Jackets did make the playoffs. They were Their trajectory went down a little bit, but they still had a strong end to the season, going 44, 31, and 7. It could have been a 50-plus win season, though, if they had kept all their players, I think. That's how good they were looking at the trade deadline. But nonetheless, Caulfield and Kako definitely did their part to help Vancouver make the playoffs. As Caulfield ended up with 66 points in 81 games, a new career high for him. With the Canucks alone, he scored 15 points in 20 games. So what a performance from him. He's really, really turning it up to a level I have not seen in franchise mode, really. That such a terrible youth and then such a crazy end to his career. Aging like a Fine wine, no other way to put it. He's got that line mate, Kyle Connor, 65 points at the age of 40. It's old time hockey here in 2037. It was heartbreak for the Canucks though in the playoffs as they went all the way to the Western Conference Finals and lost in seven to the eventual Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues. On the other side, they were against the Hurricanes, the Blues were, who beat the Blue Jackets all the way back in round number one. So shout out to Columbus. But really tough to see that kind of loss after winning the first round in five, the second round in six, then losing the third in seven. That close to the Stanley Cup Finals after just squeaking into the playoffs. Cole Caulfield, though, was a huge presence. As always, he seems to be in the playoffs. He scored 21 points in 18 games, over a point per game. You got old man Kyle Connor coming through as well. So the scoring was present for the Canucks. It's just that the Blues scored a little bit more. Shout out to this player here, Hoyle, who scored 41 points in 25 games, and this guy, Sedin. 
Sven Sedin with 38 points and 20 goals. So just to say it was a really tough matchup. Any other matchup, if any other year, probably would have been a Stanley Cup final appearance. Either way, Cole Caulfield, 36 years of age, 84 overall, expiring contract once again. Where will he be going for his 17th NHL season and year number 18 overall? Attributes are still looking great with the five-star shooting, so he still has it more than ever in his old age. Year number 18, and you can't say that Cole Caulfield isn't loyal to the teams that acquire his rights as he sticks with Vancouver, signs a two-year contract paying him 10.250 with an AAV of 5.125 million. He is an 83 overall. He has dropped to AHL top six potential, so I wouldn't be surprised if his overall continues to drop a little bit more this season. He maintains the four and a half star shooting and senses. His puck skills have dropped to three and a half stars. Skating at four, physical, his like fighting skill went from 65 to 59, so not really much. Defense has never really been great. Skating, actually his acceleration at 90 is pretty solid. Either way, the big issue is that he is a healthy scratch right now. So Vancouver paid big money to have him. They have 70 overalls in the lineup over him right now. I have no doubt that he'll find a way into the lineup. I'm just not sure exactly when, if he'll require injuries or not. Kyle Connor is an 85 overall going on the age of 41. So it's a solid team in Vancouver. I see why they have a surplus of talent, but I don't think he shouldn't be on that third line at the very least. Defense is okay. And goaltending is, yeah, pretty solid at 25, uh, 85 overall. So let's hope that Cole Caulfield gets some on-ice action this season, continues to age like the finest of all wines in France, and we'll see what year number 18 has in store. In the regular season, the Vancouver Canucks finished 15th best in the NHL, going 41, 34, and 7. Caulfield did not play the full 82 games, but still a 71-game season. Unfortunately, he only got 34 points in those 71 games as he continued to drop to a 78 overall. He was playing on the fourth line, so that all makes sense. He wasn't really given that chance to thrive. Nonetheless, I wouldn't say that those were bad numbers for fourth line minutes, but in the playoffs, it was a six game first round exit for the Canucks as they lost the Dallas Stars, who lost to the Avalanche, who went on to get swept out of the Stanley Cup Finals by the Islanders. In those six games, Cole Caulfield did not get a minute of play. Very disappointing, to be honest, that this could be his final postseason, final season of his career, and he did not get to touch the ice for a minute. I think the Canucks really could have used his help, especially with him being such a playoff performer in his career. So now the question heading into the 2038 offseason is, will Cole Caulfield retire or come back for that last season on his contract? And in the offseason, Cole Caulfield does indeed call it a career. At the age of 37, he had dropped to a 75 overall and is ready to just hang up the skates. He scored 354 goals with 555 assists, with nine, totaling 909 points in 1,345 games split between the Canadians, Blue Jackets, and Canucks. As a sniper with five, well, from four to five star shooting throughout his career, to only score 354 goals in over 1,300 games is pretty disappointing. 909 points. Not a good simulation player, I would say, in franchise mode. If you're watching this to find out, is he a good simulation player? I'd say the answer is no, despite the high offensive awareness and shooting that he had. I don't know if it was his physical or his defense or what. Maybe just his line mates. The Canadians are at a bit of a disadvantage as you have Josh Anderson at an 81 and uh, Price and Weber go down so quickly in their overall and with their bad contracts, their trade value is impossible. So I see Cole Caulfield definitely having a much better career career, especially on the Canadians, and throughout his career overall, but especially on the Canadians, I see him doing a lot better. He wasn't a very good plus-minus player, he was a negative 107, only 173 p uh, penalty minutes though, so very disciplined, he took over 3,000 shots, shooting at just over 11%, 44 of his 354 goals were game winners, 90 on the power play, 222 for number 22 of his 909 points were on the power play, one shorthanded point, playing on average over 16 minutes a night, total of over 21,000 and 21,500 plus minutes. Uh, took a few face-offs here and there, threw out 576 hits, hey, why not? Blocked 259 shots, M uh, more takeaways than giveaways, but still a lot of giveaways at 664, but it's not the worst, I would say. But in the playoffs now, he was a playoff performer, I have to say. In the 64 games that he played, including the Stanley Cup Championship with the Blue Jackets in 2035, he scored 15 goals and 37 assists for 
two points, a plus seven, only four penalty minutes, shooting at 9.4%, 14 of his 52 points on the power play. I gotta say, he was a playoff performer, although he only had 64 games to his name. At the start of his career, it was rough, especially the 2035 and 2037 runs with the Jackets and Canucks, respectively, were very demonstrative of what he could do in the playoffs when he was given the chance and the minutes and the right line mates. So an interesting career for Cole Caulfield. I hope you enjoyed the simulation here on the channel. No awards, no records broken, nothing except for his name on that Stanley Cup. And sometimes that is all that matters. So you can see all of his numbers, all the money that he made over the years. He left that one year uh, on the table, so I guess he doesn't get paid for that one. But still, I think he'll be just okay in his retirement. As you can most definitely see, his later years with Columbus were a lot better than his early years with Montreal. So that's the definition of getting better with a Age. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this career simulation. Let me know who you want to see next. Also, feel free to let me know what you liked or didn't like about this career sim. A lot shorter than the hour, you know, hour and 20 minute ones that I've been doing recently that really give you a whole look at the entire team, and but not quite 10 to 15 minutes either. So, do you like this kind of in the middle? Should it be shorter? Should it be longer? I'm all about hearing what you think would be best moving forward for next career simulations. They do take quite a long time. I got this one out in about 24 hours. So, hey, if if you enjoy it leave a like consider subscribing all the links for everything else that you need are down in the description like the twitch channel and the discord server if you do subscribe you'll be made aware of all the uploads here on the channel and you'll be supporting everything that goes on here with all the nhl 21 franchise mode and i'll be the show 21 a lot of other content coming up in the coming weeks and months getting into the summer now so once again thank you so much for watching all the best to cole caulfield i hope his career goes a little bit better than this one it wasn't the worst career but could have been better and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.